Welcome back to The Watch, and we just watched Indiana Jones and the... I forgot the subtext of this one because I didn't care that much for it. Dial of oh, Destiny. Destiny. That's it, Dial of Destiny. But I take issue with calling this Indiana Jones. And even Dial of Destiny doesn't seem that relevant to... <laughs> no, no, think about it, but... <laughs> yeah. What an atrocious, disgusting film. I, I This one upset me. Nathan, mm. this one upset me. Upset? Well, it didn't upset me as much. Mm. I think going into this, having experienced, you know, Rise of Skywalker, <laughs> I was, I was ready for the worst, and so it was still bad. I'm not saying it was good, but going in expecting everything to be ruined <laughs> in an atrocious way. Therefore, I came out not as angry or upset. I think just because I was, I was expecting. I mean, we watched Rings of Power. Yeah. Crying out loud, I was expecting something really bad. So. Yeah. Well, this uh, it brings a power as an interesting comparison because uh, uh, the character that Phoebe Waller Bridge plays in this is uh, so insufferable. Mm. But, like, one of the most insufferable characters I have ever had to subject myself to viewing. And uh, she's up there with Galadriel, yeah. with Rings of Power, with how awful and unlikable she is on camera. Mm. I think Galadriel still might win. Yeah, Galadriel has this... She, Galadriel was unironically evil. Yeah, and yeah. unbelievably selfish and arrogant. Who is this man who dares to speak with me as if he has the slightest idea of who I am? Yeah. But this character in, in Dial of Destiny, she comes close. I, like, legitimately... Backstabs and betrays Indy at multiple times. She is only in there to show him up and make him look like an idiot. Mm. And she is an, just a truly awful character. Also, it feels like, I don't know, a self-insert by someone because they are constantly trying to inflate this character. It was very weird and offhand. I mean, I, they did it with Indy previously, but this one felt... Because at least Indy had a love interest in other movies. Mm. He had like that one girl he was... Do. This one, she was just like, any guy with pecs? I'm in, but then nothing but, but happened. The guy, but the guys were into her. That's where I'm like, like, she looks like a middle-aged librarian, not your, you know, action flick character. And I'm sorry, like, of course you'll find a guy that you know will love you for who. Well, once oh. they find out who you well, are, they don't like <laughs> no, you. No, no, <laughs> like I don't think. But you know, um, everyone has their kind of you know uh, appeal. But she is not a knockout, not by far, mm. and. And to try and sell that, all all the guys are going to be like, how is it? No, no. No. <laughs> um, and so that's why it feels like, I don't know, it's just there to inflate the, uh, someone. This is a self-insert for someone. I'm so wonderful. Mm. And legit, there's legitimately a line when the character literally just says, I'm brilliant, wonderful, beautiful, self-reliant and all that. It's just... Strong, independent woman. Yeah. You don't need no man, but she want them. And... And so the two greatest crimes that makes this film so awful is, yeah, the character Phoebe Waller-Bridge plays. And I don't know how much input she had into that character, but I get the impression, like... <laughs> I think there are a few people on the Lucasfilm team that like yeah. to meddle in these sorts of things. And then what they did to Indiana Jones. Now, the mm. big worry was that they will retcon certain elements of the past. That was my biggest concern mm. going in. I was ready for them to just ruin everything that I loved. And to, like, there's one thing to have bad new movies come out, but at least there was the old stuff to go back to. But if they ruined this one by retconning stuff, going back, I'd have that memory each time of the newer movie. So mm. at least they haven't done that. But the disrespect that they showed to this character, and it's a full-blown character assassination. He is not Indiana Jones. This is not an Indiana no. Jones film. He literally does things that the true Indiana Jones would, uh, like, punch him in the head for. Mm. Uh, like, he contradicts his character on multiple times, and the ending is atrocious. It is a friggin' crime of what they want to do, the ending. And when I say this isn't an Indiana Jones film, that's on two big levels. It's not Indiana Jones because the Indiana Jones character isn't present in this film, and it's not an Indiana Jones film because he's not the main character of the film. Yeah. It's a... Uh, I don't I didn't even know her name. I did. I cared so little about her, but it's the Phoebe Waller-Bridge film. Yeah. Uh, like, it's all about her. And I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Like, 
that the writers are and I want to just also do a bit of a caveat because sometimes the writers aren't terrible. Mm. They actually put something that's mile half decent, right? And it's all the meddling and the corrections. And, and so I don't even know who wrote this. It feels like written by committee for tick boxes and all, and all that, right? And so everyone who is in control of the result of this film, okay, they, what is wrong with them to think, like they ironically think such an insufferable, like, this character, this female character, right? She is a, like, she acts like a female dog, a full-blown see you next Tuesday. Like, she's that awful, right? And they think that this is like, you want, you're, we're going to be invested in this character? We want her to see her win? She acts so freaking awful. Like, one of the first things she does is betray Indy, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you find out that she lied through her teeth and she's actually trying to, like, minor spoilers. We're trying to avoid spoilers. We'll get to all the spoilers. I got notes, right? But she's a she's a criminal. Yeah. She's a criminal. Who's done awful bad things, is very selfish. Yes. And then we're expected to like her by the end. And, and when I say she betrays him multiple times, she stabs him in the back, hmm. right? And I'm thinking, like, you're... you. You're expecting us to like this person, but the thing is, the people who created this character, this is the type of person they think is a good person and is like, yet yeah, like, then why would they make this character unless this is the female hero that they want? I uh, like, and uh, go. Uh, it's interesting how stereotypical it is for current day Hollywood to make villainous characters the heroes right mm. they are so lost that they, uh, their moral compass is so skewed that they don't understand right from wrong and we really saw that in rings of power and multiple mo like stories recently wheel of time and, and so many things and this is just nothing like you expect this to be the indiana jones replacement and she is a awful awful human do they expect to make another movie with her is that was that the plan? if it did well? Yeah, oh, it's absolutely. not going to do well. It's not. Oh, it's not going to oh. do well. I'm not going to do it. It's just hmm. <laughs> oh, I this and so the, I have all those complaints with it. Then there are story issues. The writing is stupid and dog crap. Like let me let me propose something to you, Nathan, without going into spoilers. Right? What would have happened to the villain of this film if Indiana Jones had nothing? to do in it, what would have it ultimately resulted in? He would have lost or, you know, nothing the, would have The happened. same outcome? Yeah, the like, same like, outcome. Think about... And he didn't do anything to He stop didn't it. do anything. Nah. And how was the villain ultimately defeated? Well, by his own demise. By his own incompetence! <laughs> You're like... Yeah, just, like this, this movie is pointless! Like, he didn't need to do anything! If Indy was out the movie, nothing if, would have gone wrong. If anything... Indiana Jones' presence in the film helped the villain achieve that goal quicker, which then he, you know, yeah. ultimate demise by his own incompetence. But it just would have taken longer if Indiana Jones was in it, but that would have been the same result. Yeah. Like, this is, a, I'll, I'll, I'll describe this in the spoilers in specific detail as to what this is, but this is blatant. It's shocking. Then the writing, there are so many elements of bad writing where there was like a big warning sign early on when. Uh, um, uh, I'll, and I'll explain this in the spoilers, but uh, there's a moment when he uh, is about to be basically his numbers up, and the only reason why he survives is sheer luck. Mm. Completely, well, the writers just create a Deus Ex Machina where something outside the plot just comes in and saves him. Happens multiple times, and if the writers are so incompetent, and not just like whoever's creating this film, I think it's multiple people trying to do this, right? Uh, so incompetent that they cannot have the characters get out of difficult situations by their own cleverness or planning and stuff like that. And granted, they do it once, but it's not Indiana Jones that does that, like when mm. they, but multiple times, these characters are saved by Deus Ex Machina. It's like, this is amateur tier writing. And that was like, for, and that was early on in the film. And I was like, okay, that's a warning sign. And then the overall structure of the film is pointless. Mm. So stupid. This is, a truly dog crap film and then it's insulting because it ruins one of my like Indiana Jones I love classic Indiana Jones I'm wearing this in in respect to classic Indiana true Indiana Jones because this is not an Indiana Jones film I uh, did not gain I like okay so I, th I was trying to think was there anything that I liked in this film mm -hmm. 
there's probably one thing. Yep. I think we actually got to see some Indiana Jones-like adventure in the flashback. Yep. And that's it. And that's it. Oh, one thing on the flashback, because they de-age him, did you find that uncanny at all? Or? I, well, I, well th so this isn't spoilers, this is in the trailers. You see de-aged Harrison Ford in the trailer. Uh, I thought it was the best that they've done so far. <laughs> um, but still not perfect. <laughs> still not perfect, but definitely better. Yeah. I it, it makes me sad because when I think of these movies, like with Lucasfilm stuff, they're very technology based. Like Star Wars, the first movie of Star Wars was an amazing mm -hmm. leap in technology. Uh, you know, all the stuff that George and mm -hmm. all them, ILM, like they're, the whole reason they make money is because of all the special effects they make from their movies. Mm -hmm. And I see stuff like this where I'm like, you're just dropping the ball every single yeah. time. You... <sighs> this felt like green screen the movie. The amount of times things looked fake, like the airport, you could tell it was a green I screen. I know, I, I, it's like the entire film feels digital except for a few exceptional like times when it's not. Yeah. But this is in the trailers. You see him riding on a horse down a street. It's all green screen. Mm. Everything is looking fake. And it, I'm not like, it felt like a Marvel film because everything was looking fake. And it was in it was in particular contrast, like a side of the face for me this time. Usually, like it doesn't stand out to me so much like green screen and stuff because I guess Marvel, I'm just used to it by mm. now. But I've recently watched the classic Indiana Jones yeah. films. They're right there on location. They're there. They're, They're all in real the world. Sets. Real it's sets and everything. Feels physical. Feels, it's real. They're there. This film, it's like, is it a Marvel film? It's like everything is digital and fake. And it just, it's the night and day. It just looks awful. At this point, it should be entirely CG. Like, <laughs> even the character himself, it felt very rubber and plastic when he was de-aged. Mm. And there were, like, Especially when things pop up for a second and I know what's wrong and I could fix it, mm -hmm. that's when you have issues with me for stuff. It's like, okay, if I could do that, <laughs> then you have a problem. So that also took me on the experience. Because the thing with Indy was that it always felt like he was there. Like in Temple of Doom, you felt like yes. things were scary because everything was real and practical. And, you know, mm -hmm. where this one, it, everything it felt fake and it takes you out of the experience because of it. Yeah, and I'm not against like visual effects, computer graphics, and everything like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not of the, on the idea that it's. Yeah, like practical effects are universally better mm. than digital effects. It's about execution. Yeah. Um, and sometimes a digital effect can have a much better look than um, a practical one. But this film, it, it was just awful. Mm. Yeah, like it looked fake on so many levels. <sighs> and so uh, I'm basically ready to go into specifics now. I'm the same. I, for me, overall, this is a, a two out of 10. I, I found it awful. What a just... And, and I particularly have spy for this film for what they did to the character and the insufferability of who they were trying to present as the replacement. Mm. And the ending. The ending is insulting in the extreme. Like, I... Mm. I don't know what I'd rate it. Mm -hmm. Three or four, because I wasn't as highly offended for it. <laughs> and I think people maybe who are watching this review to see if they should go see it, if someone that you know is like, come watch Indie with me, It'll it's be... not an Indiana Jones film. Yeah, just disconnect that and you're going to... I mean, if you like Indiana Jones and you like classic, you know, the classic Indiana Jones mm. movies, you will hate this film. Mm. This film would insult you for what they do to the character. Yes. If you want to see the character belittled and shown as a joke with uh, action scenes that don't make sense, that look fake and CGI with an insufferable female, you know, who is just wonderful in every way... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, spoilers now. Full spoilers. I know there was a couple of little ones, but now we're going into full, full spoilers. The uh, film, that's your warning, the film opens with uh, a flashback. Hmm. And this, like in the trailers, people thought that he might go back into time, into that period, which was giving everyone the warning that they might rewrite the past and stuff. But it actually starts as just a flashback with de-aged Harrison Ford. Yeah. And it's the most, I'm not saying it is Indiana Jones like, but it's the most Indiana Jones like uh, part of the film. Yeah. Where he's actually doing stuff. He's actually running on trains and, and punching killing. things. Yep. Uh, yeah. World War II stuff. But the writing is terrible for a number of reasons here. And the perfect example is it starts with him already captured. Yeah, mm. of course, Indiana Jones. What, what's great about Indiana Jones is that 
he often fails actually mm. uh, but he works through it and 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 he never gives up and it's his own and usually it's his own abilities that is doing that mm. that's enabling him to win and so he's captured here and they're about to hang him they take him up to a, a tower and about to hang him and he's dead he's basically dead and this is where the first warning side where he gets saved through sheer dumb luck and not only deus ex machina but also bullcrap plot armor where he should have died yeah I, I, he, uh, he should be dead right now. What happens is um, he's tied up, right? And he has a little... So he tries to cut his hands, but that doesn't save his life, right? He would still be dead, even with him getting his hands free. Because a bomb, uh, a, a drop, you know, bomb World War II style, a land poof, right in front of everyone. And everyone freezes and they just... It, it gets caught on a, uh, in the center of a rug, falling down into this hole. No one does anything. They just let it drop. Then drops through several more flows, floors, and then blows up. Yeah. And everyone in the room dies except him. And India and he's only a little bit higher up, hanging from a noose. But everyone is complete dead, and he is fine. And I'm just thinking, bull crap. It is such arbitrary nonsense. And if the writers are that incompetent that they just need Deus Ex Machina to save the hero, it's like, oh, you guys are not good writers. Um, and so the underlining plot line of this flashback is, is after the Lance of Longinus. Mm. Um, and the Nazis are hiding away all these relics and, and they're, they're taking them somewhere to the Fuhrer, so yeah, Hitler. Um, but it turns out to be a fake. But anyway, Indy, he needs to get onto the train. And uh, so he sneaks into a car and, and this is kind of general Indiana Jones adventuring stuff where he, He's uh, on a motorcycle uh, and he gets onto the train and stuff. To me, it was still over the top where, I don't know, the, the feats of him chasing down a car, because I guess you re they had practical effects, that it felt more real. Mm. Where I couldn't really, like, it's all digital, it's all, you know... Um, uh, it's nighttime as well. It's nighttime, and so you can't see the motorbike really right riding up to the tracks but i'm thinking like motor, like on tracks getting it like hooking it over like this is a, that's actually really difficult terrain to try and um navigate through on a motorbike at night time and he just rides up to a train and gets on it and and so already i'm th it's just it's it's not feeling authentic mm. in this action scene and then he goes through several processes to get through car uh train cars and one of the things I thought was, yeah, he poses as a, um, a you know, an officer. An officer. General, it's yeah. Like, yeah, and and that was like, okay, he's kind of that is the most Indiana Jones like ish stuff that that we're getting. Um, and then they they find out who he is. They're chasing him down, and uh, again he gets saved through sheer luck at one point there is this gun on the train shooting airplanes a bomb lands on it and conveniently then the gun starts shooting at all the people trying to chase him he doesn't do anything to achieve that he could have gotten on the gun and shot them uh, but he's just being saved by deus ex machina sheer luck and there's, uh, and there's parts as well where like they're shooting bombs and whatever, and then they're shooting the train and stuff. But for some reason, he has plot armor where everything just perfectly yes. goes around him and his friend. Mm -hmm. Everyone else gets shot and die. Well, some people die. Other yeah. people. Die. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, and so there was a specific moment, right, where there is the big. There's a bad guy. He's a leader of the Nazis in this group. Okay, and. Uh, and Indy, he needs to sit down, he, like he sees him coming, so he he gets like a tray, he's on a, he's on the mess carter train, and he sits down and pretends to eat, and they walk past him, and so that sets up a very distinct kind of uh, positioning, and so now he is further ahead on the train, and this guy is behind. We see the guy actually go where Indy had already passed to a door that has been jammed shut with the fake spear of Longinus. And he grabs it out and pulls it. And so again, that's the second establishing thing that this guy is behind Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, problem with the gun, it, there's fire and everything, he has to climb past it, barely climb past it. He finds his friend, he gets on the roof and he's walking forward now. And suddenly that guy who was behind him that grabbed the spear is in front of him. And why did he... Well, he can teleport now? And there weren't any carriages for him to walk under through with exactly, Indy. Exactly, because... There was an opening part where the gun was. The, the gun is on fire and everything. Yeah. Like, like, there's no way he could have gotten past it. He him teleported. He teleported. Legitimately teleported. I was just like, what? And 
<laughs> that part was also funny because he's standing there, right? And then he starts to get in a tussle. And after the tussle, then he starts to reach for his gun. He had a gun the whole time. He could have just pulled out the gun and shot Indiana Jones right there. Like the writing is stupid right now, right? And it just gets worse. This is the beginning of the film and arguably the best part of the film. And it's dumb and dog crap already. And so... There's a, an evil uh, archaeologist there who becomes the primary antagonist of the film. And he, he's the one that reveals uh, the Lance is also fake, but we have this special, uh, you mm, know, time thing. Time clock. Indiana Jones ends up finding it because he, you know, he leaves it and he goes after Indy and Indiana Jones has it. And then he comes out. And so after the bad leader Nazi is dead, this evil archaeologist man. And this guy always gets typecast as villain. He's the villain in the first um, Doctor Strange film. Yeah, he likes being the bad guy. He always casts his guys villain. Look, he does a decent enough job, I suppose. Um, but he's just the classic villain like, actor. Arch I always cast him as this. Anyway, so he, he meets Indiana Jones at the top. He pulls out a gun. <laughs> like this one does. Tells him to hand over the clock. Indiana Jones throws him a wrapped up thing to him, which is, you know, oh, well, obviously it's a bait and switch. That's not the real clock. Mm. Uh, it's just a classic, very cliche kind of writing at the moment. Then the train, while moving very fast, do you like you've probably seen uh water towers on trains? So into the steam engines along the side of like you know the tracks, there are water towers to refill the boilers mm. and stuff, and it has these arms that hang out over the thing. One of them, the train passes underneath one of them, uh his friend goes, Indy, Indy, ducks under, and that thing smacks this evil archaeologist man bang right in the face. Oh, I get his. There, there is no pulling punches. It hits him full force. They're going fast too. Like trees are real. By, like I, I, this guy, dead. If a punch can kill someone like that, probably took his head off. There is yeah. Like there is no way with the speed and impact that they show that any human is surviving that. Spo of course he does. Like, like, he, like he's perfectly fine when they fast. Without a scratch, not a problem at all. And <laughs> and so um. We had three tickets booked, right? And uh, Tyrath was going to join us, but uh, the schedule and other things, just he wasn't able to join us, so we had to spare one. And so offered it to my kids, and I'd warn my kids, you know, probably not going to join, but my eldest son, he, he's like, he came with us. And uh, he's, he's just in high school. But yeah, he pointed out, he's like, that guy that should, should be survive. He, that he, he should be dead. <laughs> and so that's... Arguably the best part of the film, and it is awful and stupid, and it's riddled with Deus Ex Machina nonsense, and people forgetting that they have guns, people surviving when they shouldn't survive, or dying when they should or should have. Yeah. And so then we fast forward to present. Pre well, no, I say present. You know, I like the furthest along chronology of Indiana Jones, and it's as bad as you probably got. You know, warning signs of in the trailers. He is a washed up loser. He's getting divorced. His son, which is the last, last fake Indiana Jones film went all through all these suits to try and establish, he's dead. It's just off screen. Oh, he's dead now. Don't worry about it. He died at the, in the war and it made his wife sad, so she left him. But don't worry about the Shia LaBeouf, uh, LaBeouf, whatever, replace meant that they were sitting here. He's just dead. He's getting divorced. He lives in this dinky, uh, like, apartment mm. on the poorer end and like last time he had this night i i remember you see actually see his house in one of the indiana jones films and it's this nice you know like home on a street and it's a full house and now he's living in some apartment did, did, was there was his house taken from him in the divorce but the divorce hasn't gone through you see the papers there i mean even his job i feel like because he retires in this as well as further ahead but it feels like he had to change universities. Now he's got like the lower paid grade one and they give him a little gift and he's like, thanks guys. I Like he's so washed up and disgruntled and like, he should be a legend at this point. <sighs> like he has found some, uh, and even though some artifacts go in hiding, like um, of course the Ark of the Covenant and stuff, but there are other artifacts that he has found that in the archeology span community, this guy would be a legend. Mm of unparalleled proportions, right? Universities would be like, would be willing to pay through the nose to have him, you know, teach and stuff. Yeah, what? like, that was another thing. But no, he's just, uh, he's teaching students that don't give a crap 
about what he's trying to teach. And the way they introduce him, I, I get, this is purposeful, right? They do, they, you can't do this by accident. Where they, he's in his under, they decide the opening shot of introducing him in now the the, the supposed present timeline of, of this film, right? Is in his underwear without a shirt on. He looks weak, old, saggy. Fell asleep watching TV, woken up by kids. With an empty thing, I, I we can't have happy endings. They want our, you know, classic heroes to end up being washed up losers because those are, are problematic people from the past. They need to be replaced with more better, you know. Put together people who know what they're doing. Yeah. Well, well, I mean. Well. <laughs> their idea of better the assumption people, of, which, yeah. are, which is just awful, terrible, like, people that I, I oh, gosh. And so the opening is just insulting. Um... Okay, okay, so his goddaughter appears in, in the um uh, in the lecture. Lecture. And already, or like they go out of their way to try and find moments for her to appear smarter than everyone else around her. Mm -hmm. And so he's asking questions and she knows the answers to all the questions and uh, and then anyway there's uh they give him there's a retirement thing, they give him the present. He just gives it to some bum. He doesn't care about it. He's having a drink and she meets him in a bar. And it's, oh yes, it's his, his goddaughter. And uh, she proposes that she wants to find this artifact that her dad was after for so long. And first sign of, uh, this is a not a good person. This is a selfish person. Like um, Indy asks her, why does she want to find it? And she says, to be famous. It's not for this sake of history and knowledge and the betterment of, you know, the society and the human race as a whole. It's just fame. It's mm -hmm. a selfish motivation, which is in line with her character, by the way, uh, because she is an extremely selfish character because we find out ultimately that this she's lying through her teeth. Yeah. Like, like this is all a ruse to get this artifact to fence, to sell off for money. Like, so she's a criminal. Uh, and is revealed later. And so anyway, Indy uh, decides to show her where it is and is trying to tell her that it's a lost cause. And then there are other nefarious kind of people, you know, after the dial. And they, they're chasing her, I guess. Like, they don't really establish exactly how, how they are aware of the connections, but they're just kind of chasing her with the vain hope that she'll lead them to the, the dial. They didn't even know who Indiana Jones was. Well, who's this guy? Get us a file on him. And it's the uh, evil archaeologist Nazi man who is now suddenly has some level of influence because he helped America build the rocket that took people to the moon. Um, and so the president wants to thank him. And for some reason, the CIA is working with him. <sighs> There's just so many weird things with that character because he's in America. They're celebrating, and this like guy comes in with food and drink, yeah. asks him, you know, were you in the war? You didn't win the war, you know. The Nazis just lost the war. And he says things like, hmm, I don't. If you were American, I don't think you'd want to associate with this person, let alone <laughs> ask them to help you build a rocket. Like it's very bizarre. Like you would be wondering about everyone who was associated with him, and they try and justify it because he helped them build the rocket. He was because of his smart knowledge. It's like, he did say he was an archaeologist, not a rocket scientist. Like in, the, in the flashback, archaeologist, black and white, not a rocket scientist, but I guess he's just, he's smart. He knows math, rocket science. Math, math, yeah, yeah. math, Maths. Even though he didn't know the math language that uh, Indy and... Um, You're finding more plot holes for me, Chad. My rating's going down. <laughs> This movie is riddled with it, man. I've got, I got notes. I got lots of notes, man. This is an awfully written, instructed film. And so, yeah, uh, there's a CIA lady who is also working with mercenaries that are very... They're, they're like secret Nazis. They, mm. they serve the uh, Nazi archaeologist. Like, they're, they're, they're the type of servants that will give their lives. They're just... Uh, the goons. They're goons that will do whatever he says, literally, like, literally murder multiple times, and then there's a CIA lady that's working with him for some reason. Um, and they try and establish that he has told the US government that finding this thing will be uh, something good for, that he can do for the kind of, I don't know, mm. weapon or technology or, or something. And so they've w been willing to allow them to, you know, 
do this stuff. But it is established that this girl, there's a there's a black girl, and she is a, a member of the CIA. I think I'm pretty sure. They don't say anything, but, but that's no, the assumption. Indiana Jones says you're CIA yeah. to her, but she doesn't really confirm it. But she does say, you know, like contact with higher ups or the president and other things. Um, because anyway, some. I think it's very safe to assume that she's CIA because maybe he establishes it so. But the issue is, right, they go to the university where he was and the goons murder one of the people in there. They're like, this old lady, so what are you doing? And they just flame out shoot her and the CIA lady's like, why did you do that? But then he keeps helping him out. It's just like, <laughs> what? And then they jump Indy and the insufferable lady in the like place in the university that they store artifacts. And she stabs, she takes the thing, runs away, locks the door behind her, and ditches him. Hmm. Yeah, this is supposed to make us like this. Oh, I want to say female dog. Like, like, she is such an awful, hateable character. Like, so Indy then is being ditched, and now they're after him. Presumably to kill him or, or capture him, but they're certainly shooting at him. It just makes no sense mm -hmm. what they're doing. <laughs> and then we ensue, because somehow he, they capture him and then he escapes and then they have a weird goose chase as well with horses. Mm -hmm. Also, the way that she runs. <laughs> did you see? Lucasfilm did this with Obi-Wan Kenobi with little Leia, where mm -hmm. she's like running and these grown men are like bolting and they can't catch her. With this one too, she's like little running with heels. And I'm like watching this going, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Very little of this film does. And they're like, do you think a motorbike could out chase a horse? Yeah, you'd, you'd think so. You'd think so, yeah. yeah. Apparently not. No, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's really, really dumb. And so... Uh, because he does get caught, and then he tries to break free because they, for some reason, the car that they 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 throw him in decides to go down an alleyway with the parade with a parade and dead end, and, and they reverse into a cab, and they had to get him out and move. They have to go on foot now again. Deus Ex Machina. Nothing he does to set this up to get for, uh, and it's the villain's incompetence, which they purposely wrote that way to uh, because they had no other way to like. You, you, you probably know there's a big like parade mm. and going down an alleyway to point towards the parade. <laughs> you think that. <sighs> and so in the parade, he uh, is amongst a crowd of people. So he punches them, gets free. Uh, before he got caught, by the way, he tried to call in the murder in his, um, yeah. in his university. This is important because it sets up a really dumb plot point that he establishes his supposed motivations for finding the Dial of Destiny, which is, it's really dumb, and we'll get there. Uh, so anyway, he tries to get help from a police officer on a horse. Police officer gets punched out by a goon. He gets on the horse, runs away, and then there's a dumb CGI, like it's all green screen, it looks so fake, uh, and you probably see in the trailers, and he ends up riding down a subway, and he gets free by hopping on a subway train, and the goons just watch him leave. And you know one of the problems about trying to escape on a subway train? They know the next stop. Yeah, they know the next stop. <laughs> they could have just gone to the next stop. They know where it's going. But uh, uh, they can't do anything. Oh, he got free, dang that, dang it. <laughs> and there's just dumb things too. He's riding the horse in the subway, goes on the tracks, going towards a train, and conveniently in the dark sees a gap that gets the horse to run in. I uh, Another Deus Ex Machina save. He gets in a situation where instant, like... You know, unavoidable death yeah. is before him, but luckily, like so conveniently, there is an opening in the barrier beside the track that he can jump through on the horse to avoid the oncoming train. Yeah. Pure luck. It's just the writers saving his life because they're too incompetent for him to be able to figure out a way to save his, himself. Okay? It, it happens multiple times. And so, okay, okay. After he escapes, and because they can't chase him on a train, uh, he's gone, right? He is watching like a TV, and there's a news report, and he is now... And I, I picked this out. As soon as I saw him over the dead body of that lady that got murdered, I was like, they're going to frame him for murder. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I thought about it, I'm like, this is really stupid. Because police, there's a murder scene. They might want to get some information of what happened, like the supposed suspect fleeing the scene of the crime. And 
would the person who murdered the lady be running away from people shooting at him? <laughs> like, like, there are these people with guns that, in crowds, were shooting at him, chasing after this guy. It's like, who are the people with guns? Hmm. Maybe they were the ones who shot the lady. They had the gun. <laughs> like, yeah. like, and he called it in. He had the, Indian Jones was the one that called up the police. And then you, you would have eyewitness reports of gunmen. <laughs> Like, and indeed, like, does he have a reason to be there? Yeah, he works there and is running away from people who have guns from that location. So the film wants us to believe that the police would logically think, I, th I think the main suspect is uh, Miss Dr. Jones. The guy we uh, is old, we trust, we know, has a good, clean record of doing good things for the community. Yeah, he's a legend in the archaeology yeah. community. He just decided up and murder the people at his... <laughs> And so, Indiana Jones's brilliant idea to prove his innocence has no logical through line. But this is it. If he finds the dial of the dial that was stolen from him because the bad guys took the dial and he had it, that would prove his innocence. How? Your guess is as good as mine, but that's what he's convinced will do. If he finds her, uh, the insufferable girl, and because she has it, she gets, she's the one that got away with it, right? That would prove his innocence of the murder. No, it would. <laughs> it's it's really dumb, <laughs> but that's what the, the movie is saying. <laughs> and so he gets found by Sala. I think it's Sala. Is it? Uh... I can't remember his name, but uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But yeah, Raiders right. of the Lost Ark. You know, he plays Gimli. Mm -hmm. you know. Good nostalgia base, it's just isn't nostalgia, it? It's yeah. just nostalgia. And get, here's a washed up. You know, poor guy living Taxi in a park driver. too, you know? Like, Stereotypes, a bit harmful. <laughs> he couldn't have... And he, he seemed like a competent, hard-working guy who had a business and everything. Somehow, Indy Andrew Jones helped him get to Amer migrate to America, but now his life looks, looks pretty, you know... Everyone's in an apartment for some reason, you yep. know, even though the, the one in the Second World War, everyone's just mm, not having a good time. Yep. Um, and it, he is the one that, like, so for some reason, knows that the insufferable lady is actually, she, she sells off these artifacts for money. And she does it in this location. I don't know how like how he knows, but he does. Someone who knows that should probably have a bit more, you know, going from them than just being a taxi driver as well. Like, I know secret intel from the black market, but you know, just, I'll just do taxi driving. And uh, this is an aside, we kind of pass it chronology, but there was a one moment when they, they were, the, bat, the goons, when they were trying to follow the insufferable lady and she meets up with Indiana Jones, they don't. The, the goons and the CIA lady don't know who he is. And she says, get me a file on this Jones, right? They go into the building, they chase the thing, and she comes back and someone has the file for it. I'm thinking, like, hang on, where did they get that from? Like, this is, they could have faxed it through. <laughs> did someone travel to the CIA headquarters, get a pre-made file on Dr. Jones, travel it all the way back to the university, hand it in in like half an hour? Is it the 50s or the 60s I know. or something? Like, <laughs> fax isn't even that common yet. They're still working with paper and pen. Like, it, So just small, stupid things in this film. It's riddled throughout, okay? And so I think his name is Sala. He just knows about Phoebe. She's in this location. And so Indiana Jones, wanted man. Suspect in murder. <laughs> Do you want to say? Or what goes to the airport? To, goes know, to yeah. the airport to leave the country. And he says, "If you go to the airport, the cops will find you and arrest you." But that's it goes to the airport. No one arrests him. No one arrests him. <laughs> it's like mm. here's my passport, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Surely they've got pictures as well. You think like, like this is... Oh, I see. You're from not here. Surely, like, like the airport will be tipped off of wanted people, right? <laughs> This isn't the 40s. This is like, what, the 60s now? 50s, 60s. When did they land, land on the moon? Like they definitely was... have, yeah, I, they got phones and and it forms of communication. So surely the airport is one of the first, like, you know, have office police, like, out on the lookout for wanted murderers. Especially some random guy on the news. Yeah. He's like, you're him. I'm going to get Exactly. There was just one guy watching the news. It's like, you're him. But the they airport. don't explain it. He just, he just gets on a, a plane and leaves. First class or something too, because he was like having a nice little yeah, drink, yeah. lots of leg space, reading through mm. the notes. It was all good. Don't think about it. This is this film. If you like, it, I, is a don't think about it film because you just start thinking about even the, some of the most basic stuff. The annoying thing is though, that they they mention it, they make you aware of it, <laughs> and then they completely forget about <laughs> it they, in the next scene. They don't even. 
That's most frustrating. Like it's a, if you're unaware, okay, you weren't aware of it. But when you say it and then you don't do anything about it, yeah, who's a big <laughs> idiot? Oh my gosh. Okay, so there is, uh, I think, a flashback. Yeah, th th this yeah. way there's a flashback to Indiana Jones going to the father of the insufferable lady, who was also the one in the, f the original flashback that they found the dial, and the father of the insufferable lady, he's like convinced that it's gonna, you know, go through time. And Indiana Jones doesn't believe this. Mm. And I'm like, this is Indiana Jones. Like, you've seen. <laughs> Voodoo magic. The Ark of the Covenant peel the skin off people's bones. You've seen the Holy Grail heal your father's gunshot wound, right? You've and even though this is not an Indiana Jones film, you've seen aliens and everything. He went like nothing should be impossible at this point. And he's like, oh, I don't believe it. And he don't and he's like and then he's like, you don't have any proof. The father says, I can get it. And Indiana Jones says, uh, proving, it, proving it is is what makes it science. That's the, no, that's the end of the scientific process. It's like... I mean, even then, you're going to get complicated in silence. There's some science that we have that's theory. That isn't yes, technically proven. Proof. It, like, and yet we still... Yeah. It's based on evidence and perhaps, you know, mathematical models that indicate this result. And, and, and that's what it seems like that father had. He's got like, you know, notes and <sighs> uh, uh, points of historical references and stuff. But Indy, you won't have a bar of it. Which is, this is Indiana, this is where the film starts to really contradict his character. Indiana Jones, the man who wants to know uh, truth, find the artifacts and everything like that. Suddenly he's not caring about this. Doesn't care. Doesn't care. And so that's a flashback and they show the insufferable lady when she was a little girl and he leaves. Um, okay, okay. So now he's suddenly in the, I don't know, some seedy bar in Morocco or whatever. And he gets there conveniently at the exact right time when the insufferable lady is trying to sell the, the, the magic dial thing. Uh, but the bad guys also meet them there as well. Mm. Uh, but we're introduced to an interesting character. There's this young character and is sitting there and he's pretending to fly a plane. Foreshadowing? Foreshadowing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the most clumsy and also bullcrap foreshadowing because this isn't... I, I, maybe if they actually had him flying a plane with his dad behind him, instructing his... It's cardboard. It's a cardboard like set up thing. And it's only one time. Like at least... One time. Indiana Jones, like his personality, his archaeology, he knows mm. this stuff. One time we see a kid with cardboard going, all right, there we go, never mentioned again. And also, I'm not sure if the uh, creators are aware of this, but planes are different. Like yeah, different One models, plane yeah. has different controls in different ways like you need to do to be able to start it and, and different inputs to get the right effects in the flight and, and stuff. And so we don't know what hell type of plane, you know, the kid is uh, trying to pr learn how to... Uh, but he's never been in a real plane. No. At all. I mean, we're in the spoiler section. Yeah, he later on, he, he literally flies a plane. Not just, like, takes the wheel. He gets in a plane, starts the plane... Hot wires it. Hot wires it, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> hot wires the plane, takes it off in a storm, and flies it and follows another plane. <laughs> And then when they go through the... Go, spoil it. Go through a time portal. Time portal, yes. Engine gets cut off. They're flying down. He manages to restart it. Well, no, no, no. no. Pilot. Luckily, again, remember how we said this film, like, Deus Ex Machina, where the film puts the characters in inescapable situations and then just decides to Deus Ex Machina save. Luckily for the kid, there was a pilot sleeping in the plane when he stole it. <laughs> And you didn't wake up when the plane turned on. Like, you're sleeping in a plane. They're loud. You'd feel vibration. Even opening the door, you'd go, oh, what's that breeze? Yes. That's cold. Oh, I hear this kid talking to himself. <laughs> this film is stupid. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, so foreshadowing is... Uh, that explains it, right? And then we see the insufferable lady, and she is trying to fence it off, and there's bids and everything, and Indy comes in. No, you can't sell it. It's mine. And then the bad, evil archaeologist man arrives, and oh, no, it's mine. And this is where we get the uh, capitalist lie. Like, you stole it from me, I stole it from you, and I stole it from you. That's capitalism. No, no that's not. Uh, capitalism is about free trade. 
of capital, you know, goods and services. If anything, there's a philosophy that uh, involves redistributing wealth, forcibly taking things. It's stealing things, yeah. Stealing things for like, one of which philosophy is more associated with theft. But it's made by activists. And so mm. they've got to put in the line because capitalism always bad. And these are either socialists or full-blown communists, uh, even though their philosophy is the one that has m far more theft in it. Um, and they've got to throw that in there because... Yeah, of course. Because, yeah, right? And then Indiana Jones decides to take out his whip. Whip her, like, he starts to whip around. I'm going to take it. Then everyone pulls out a gun at him. And we we laughed at this in the trailer because we see this in the trailer. And so he ducks down and they just shoot. Like, they, they, like, all you have to do is, like, down, down. But everyone they, just, just, like, shoot forward. And they don't reload and shoot again. No, no. They just, just go, oh, I'm out. I guess that's I, it. And then he's, he's ducking, he's crawling underneath the table. And then everyone's like, must be out. Where did he go? They No one's shooting at him again. They're like babies. <laughs> Where did he go? I don't know. <laughs> and then I think the bad, I can't remember when the bad guys start shooting, but uh, it was, uh, it was really, really dumb. And then, oh, oh my gosh. So he, he, he grabs insufferable lady, right? They both get out of the thing, um, uh, the, the whatever bar that they were having this auction. And they're going through the streets and they run up close to, they look like police officers, or mm. like, you know, the police officers of this country. She says something in that language. And Indy asked her what she said. She said, I told them to shoot you. <sighs> I, I, I made a note of this because of how, like, just how much of a cow this character is. But this isn't the first thing. There's been subtle, continual things of her acting snide and arrogant and overly confident uh, throughout every time she's on screen. Yeah. And just the... the okay. She has this gripe as well, like, oh, my father died and you... I wish I had a godfather or something to help me, Indy. Mm -hmm. How you didn't help me? But then at the same time, she's like, yeah, kill this person. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, I... I, I at the beginning, like in multiple times throughout the beginning of this film, right? She literally, basically abandons him to death. Hmm. That that's like she's happy to cause his death through sometimes her direct action, like the goons after when she locks him in. Those goons just murdered a lady in the room. I, like that's it, like locking him in to death. So she has tried to legitimately murder Indiana Jones multiple times, and so I fully believe her when she says, "I, I told them to shoot you." Yeah, she she has tried to kill him, and then like. Two thirds into the film, uh, they the film flips a switch where suddenly she says, "We can't just leave him to die." And I'm like, "What are you talking about, you friggin' ah! <laughs> Like, don't don't tell me the film is literally trying to make us believe that this cow of a character cares about Indiana Jones suddenly. Not a friggin' chance. And no, and so every type of thing where uh, she. Because then from that point on, she suddenly cares about him and tries to save his life and everything. It's like, no, no, you do not get to try and tell me that film. Not with everything it was shown with this character up to this point. There is no affection. She is a heartless, just husk, black-souled piece of crap of a person. Literally tried to murder him, right? And so this was another one of those times where she's like, just uh, you go ahead and shoot him. And I'm... I'm Right. Oh, and so then they they um steal these little car things, and uh, and like when 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 the we there's more of the character right, and she's acting like such and such. So she starts to break. Like he says, Indiana Jones says something along the lines of, "Who have you become? Like who are you?" And, so, and she says, uh, um, "Resourceful, daring, beautiful, self sufficient." Mind you, as well, the one thing we forgot. So the cops show up. And then her, like, ex oh, shows up as well. Yes. And it's like, oh, my love, I missed you. You come but, back to return. Like, so she she is awful, this mm. person. I, like, the depths of her depravity and vileness is quite impressive. Shockingly so. So she got a man to fall in love with him. Deeply so, right? For the whole purpose of using him to her own ends and then abandoning him. And this guy sh rocks up trying to, like get her back and it's because she uh i don't know she either stole something or less she's bail money she's got debt yeah, yeah he yeah. was a rich guy so she's like oh, okay i'm gonna get in with him like try to understand how vile that is so she purposely won the heart of someone now already we're in 
drastically unrealistic territories because I doubt, I, I just cannot believe someone as insufferable as her could ever get anyone to love, fall in love with her. And also, have you looked in the mirror, love? You're not like, like Even... if she was a femme fatale kind of woman, like using men and stuff like that, she doesn't exactly match the type, the visual type for that, that character to be believable. Even her charisma. She yeah. doesn't have the flirtatious ability. She just, with everyone, she's a brick wall and she's like, oh, I'm better than you. Yeah, yeah. There's I'm, nothing attractive. She's arrogant, I'm so great. Like, like, who would fall in love with this awful character, right? And so there's that. But then the film wants us to believe that she, men just fall in love with her because she's so wonderful. And this isn't the only There's another time when a guy, like, walks past and is like, mm, like, no. <laughs> like, No. <laughs> Just say it. Like, like, oh my gosh. And I want to emphasize this point, right? So she got this guy to fall in love with her purely the sole purpose to use him mm. and get money from him for her own ends and then to ditch him. That is truly evil. Yeah. That is that is violent evil. And she she knowingly did it because there's a line where she says she brags about robbing this man of a lifetime of happiness. That's a line she says. Like I think it was something along those, what have you been doing? This, this, that, and robbing a man of a lifetime of happiness. She's proud of this. What a despicable, despicable see you next Tuesday. Like serious. Like I don't Worse than Gladriel? I don't know. It's, it's, it's getting there, man. It's getting there. This might be one of the worst female characters I've ever seen. In terms of her actions, yeah. You know, when I, he's like, do you have the ring still? She's like, I didn't get it for much. She <laughs> sold the ring. Like, oh, man. If... Like, like, I'm thinking of Gladriel, where she, she Gladriel manipulates, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, before we know who he is. Is it Hellbrand? Hellbrand, yeah. yeah. Purposely manipulates Hellbrand for her own selfish reasons, right? Purposely allows evil artifacts to like glad she was, she is like world ending evil. Mm -hmm. I can she might still be in the lead, but uh, seriously, I don't know. Uh, well, I feel like if this goddaughter was in the position of you know flirting with basically the center <laughs> of the world, she'd probably be like, Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know. yeah cause I'll use you. You're right, because. This is another level because she knowingly, knowingly is breaking his heart and using this guy for his own ends, mm. like, and is proud of it. She's actually happy about it. Where Galadriel, there's a level of uh, incompetence yeah. to her evil. Like her morality is kind of shifted to wanting these certain things. Where I there's a part where she talks, uh, the the goddaughter says, you know, don't lecture me about morality when you're, you know, a grave robber and thieving and stuff, you know. Don't question my morals, because your morals are just as bad as mine, even though they're not. They're not. They're legitimately not. And he's like, oh, I, me and your father did great things, you know, wonderful work. You're just ruining people's lives and stealing money and all. Like, she... She's a villain. <laughs> I remember the one quote she said was, the only thing that matters, or the only thing that's important in life, is cash. <sighs> that was it. I was Disgusting. like... Disgusting. Wow. Like, okay. Right, whoever's making this, this is what they think is a like a heroic lead character and the replacement of Indiana Jones. And if, if, if this film did well, that's what that, that would be the replacement. Like it just goes to show you the people making this film. This is what they're like. This like that. They think this is all, you know, and then of course you're right. They go out of their way to belittle, but also vilify Indiana Jones. Suddenly he's a grave robber. Hmm. And he's been shown incompetent on multiple levels already, and it gets worse. But now they just find out he's now just a grave robber. It's disgusting. And then there's the whole loving herself line where she's resourceful, daring, beautiful, self-sufficient. Now, like, resourceful, daring, self-sufficient, those are all aspects that a villain can have, perfectly mm. fine. And yeah, she could be that. The, the one that I take on, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this beautiful. It's like... <laughs> You know, sometimes... There, Chad, I'm sure there's a guy somewhere. Like, You've got to have the self-confidence, otherwise it's just yeah, yeah. demoralising. I mean, I, 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 it's the face. I, I, <laughs> my, for me, my wife has the most beautiful face ever, and, uh, and she has this beautiful like, bone structure and everything. Look at, look at her on the profile. There's a bit of a... Kind of a hook. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just wouldn't like but her now, because of her morality. Yeah, yeah, her, her, personality, her personality makes her appear more loathsome and unattractive. Massively so. And if she had actually had a nice personality, yeah, I could absolutely see a guy being attracted to her. But it has to be said, she is not, by far, she is very far from the stereotypical beauty like that you would see in classic James Bond films or something like that, right? You know? And, and it, I, <laughs> just so miscast. <laughs> and, and because it is like a personal thing, right? I find her very unattractive on a personal mm. level. That's my, I'm entitled to be attracted and, and unattracted to whatever I like. And I find her very unattractive personally. Um, and so when she says you know, beautiful, I'm just like, I guess for someone, <laughs> someone out there, maybe. I, I also got another impression that this is all just green screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a, uh, a Phoebe Waller Bridge film. It's all about her. This is where she is doing all these, uh, you know, big things. Like she gets up, she jumps on the back of a car and starts smashing things. And Indy is left behind, just trying to chase her. And this is where it really starts to tell you this isn't an Indiana Jones film. Mm. Like not even that the character isn't present. But if the character is present, he's not the main character. This I'm is about to, her. Yeah, I'm just trying to think as well because there's a part where they're like. Oh, no, that's a bit later, I think. When they're recouping Anne's supplies and she's talking to the kid and she's like, I'm in charge, okay? He's yeah, in yeah, charge. Yeah. I'm in charge. Don't worry about this. He's just... I, I have a specific note of that. There are two lines that I they think say... that's a bit later, isn't it? It is a yeah. bit later. Um, because they... Uh, basically, they get away. Now. The bad guys get away with the dial. And they're a bit stuck. Um, and they... Uh, at this point... I mean, why on earth does Indiana Jones need this lady? It's because she's memorized, suddenly she has memorized all the notes of her father and she'll be able to find the location of the next thing that they need because, but I'm thinking like, under what, in what world do you really feel like you would stick with this awful person who's tried to get you killed multiple times? Because what happened in, was it the Holy Grail, uh, the Last Crusade, when they, he had a love interest that betrayed him? I can't remember. I think that was that one. She she ended up being a Nazi as well. She oh, was yeah, 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 yeah. He, like, ditched her after that. He was like, oh, okay. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. You're out. Nothing to do... Uh, nothing but this to time, do it's like, kill me twice? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. My best, you're my goddaughter, so I have to you know forgive you again and again and again. She's an awful person. Goddaughter or not, she's a lost cause, Indy. Um, and then he starts to, like, have to tag after her. like, mm. And she's like, you know... And he says, you need me. Not she needs him. He says, you need me. You, you can't go without me. And that's it. like, again, who's the, who's the main character of this film? Who's leading it? It's, mm. it's not Indiana Jones. There's, I, I, I forget the line, but I have a note here that he, like, there, something is funny because the takeaway, the, the punchline was that he's old. He's yeah. just making fun. And I forget exactly what it was, though. Um, I think he was talking about planes, I think. Lots of planes? And he's like, weren't you there with the, the brothers invented... Fly oh, that's true to them, and then he's like, "I'm not that old." What are you talking about? Yeah, that's and then right. she's like, oh, "Just laugh about it. It's funny." And it's again belittling the main character. Isn't mm. it funny because it's old? Um, yep, yeah, that's, that's what it was. Uh, it's also revealed that she she's so wonderful and and genius that she memorized the necessary. So I didn't memorize everything. Some of it was really boring, but I memorized everything that we need. I, you know, she's so wonderful. Yes, and... rely on her word for that. So that won't. Mm. And, uh, and uh, she's always right in this film. Like, she she also knows the uh, crazy math language as well. Okay, um, and then yeah, I have a speaker. You know, Indy says says you need me. He's following her around, and so the kid who was pretending to fly is her child sidekick. And I'm thinking, wow, they really are trying to make her the next Indiana Jones. This this is totally um a Indian short round replacement where she has a, a kid sidekick it's like wish.com replacement <laughs> <laughs> she's in you know insufferable and he's not funny yep yep oh my gosh and so indy says you need me the reason why he needs him is because he knows someone with a boat uh she wouldn't be able to find someone with a boat uh, I, I, that's, uh, this is, oh, checkmate, you got me, India. I'm going to have to let you follow me. I know where, she has the more important information. She knows the location of where it's at. Mm. And the thing that Indiana Jones can offer is something that is easily replaceable. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, 
Got you, got me, Indy, I need you. You'll show us, you'll give us the boat and a diving crew to get the thing we need. And it's just, it's also annoying because he says, oh, I know a guy with a big boat. He's really good. He's the best in the business. And they rock up. He's got a smaller boat. He's this old cranky man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, Indy, you unreliable. Mm, you didn't, you didn't pull through. Yep, yep. And the, his friend who owns the boat just happens to, happens to be Antonio Banderas. He just pops up. And, Indy! And it's, it's Antonio Banderas. What a waste. <laughs> I mean... He's fallen off a bit in terms of his prominence. He's not yeah. a, as nearly as much of a bigger draw these days. Um, but hey, the voice of Puss in Boots, and Puss in Boots did well, but he appears, but he doesn't last long. <laughs> okay, so they get on his boat, and there's like a series of interactions where she's so great. She's uh, doing card tricks, um, and these card tricks are just... Pathetic card tricks, but it's a, how do you do it? It's amazing. And everyone is loving her because of card tricks. And the, the card trick isn't even a card trick. It's I'm making you choose what card I want. It yeah. isn't even a magic trick. It's I can control your choices. Look how great I am. Listen to me. I'm in power. It's so, I hate this character so freaking much. Um, <clears throat> she's looking through things. She's like, this is useful. That's useful. Oh, dynamite. I'll get that. There's a... Uh, um, foreshadowing with dynamite and this is when one of the shipmates walk past her and he's like oh yeah and she's like and that has promise too and i'm thinking <laughs> this, is, this is such like self insert wish fulfillment fantasy bull <laughs> i'm sorry lady that's not how guys every guy you find is going to be responding especially with your attitude and on the job too, I feel like, because he's a diver, he's not going to be like, hey, pretty girl. It's going to be like, all right, we're going to be diving soon. Like, men's mind aren't always what they... Maybe they're, they're just really, primitive. really thirsty guys. They're sailors. They don't see... But the problem is they meet them while they're on shore. But <laughs> Yeah, they're on shore. I'm sure the guys have... Yeah. Anyways. Um, and so then there's a also then there's a conversation between Indy at night time on the boat with Insufferable Lady. And this is where he drops the line of, I don't believe in magic. <laughs> She's mm. like... Have the people made this film not watch the Indiana Jones films? <laughs> Doesn't believe in magic. It was in the trailer, and we roasted in the trailer for just being utterly stupid in the context of who Indiana Jones is. And then he does say, but I've seen things I can't explain. Dude, you, you've seen magic. You've, you said, and he later on says in the film that I've been, I, I've been tortured with voodoo dolls and stuff like that. How, how, how were you tortured with voodoo dolls, Indy? Just explain what... Tell me the scientific concept of that. Yeah, place. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that would absolutely qualify as magic. Mm. And then he says, well, if there was magic, I'd do this thing. that would be all magical. Yeah. And then he drops a line that I just feel reeks of uh, uh, certain ideologies. Uh, he says, and it's, it's a legitimately stupid line. Like, Indiana Jones as a character is not dumb enough to say something like this. Like, you would have to be deficient of certain brain cells to believe this mm -hmm. and it says it doesn't matter what you believe what? but how hard you believe it disney loves that line don't they what was the other we've watched other things recently they've said uh, that. similar things it's like it doesn't matter what the, you believe the truth doesn't matter your feelings do you yeah. believe it enough you you feel it's true enough that's what matters it's the my truth truth subjective bull crap where you know if i just believe it enough the, the reality around sh must conform to my projection of my reality. And if you don't, you're denying my identity and you're a bigot. I, mm. I, it's, it's that philosophy that is just underpinning so much, right? And, and it, it's in here. It's like, like uh, this is a clear sign that people making this are ideologues, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter what you believe. <laughs> just matters how hard you believe it. It's like, you know... Go, go diving in an ocean, underground, start drowning, and just, if you believe hard enough that you can breathe underwater, that's what matters. You might die, but at least you died believing in yourself. It's so retarded. It's, I can't believe this crap. Uh, no, there is objective truth. There is reality. It doesn't matter how much you can cry about it. Reality is reality, okay? And you cannot force people to buy into your own delusions. I do not have to believe whatever your delusions are just because you really want to believe it. No, that's not how it works. People are entitled to believe what they want. Uh, so anyway, just a bit of a propagandistic ideological line right there. And it comes from Indiana Jones. 
It's so stupid. He believes in objective truth. Come on, us. Gosh. Okay, okay. Um, they go underwater. They're diving now for the artifact and everything. And so here's another moment of just shows you how, how, wonder, how much of a wonderful person this insufferable cow is, right? Uh, they find the thing, and then when they pull out the box, eels suddenly swarm out, and Indiana Jones is starting to freak out. He's getting attacked by these killer eels. What does she do? Just leaves. Just yeets. Yeah, she comes back for him, but but that's not what a good person does. Person in mortal danger, right in front of you, drop the artifact and save the person. But no, she, she makes sure she gets what she wants, the money, the valuable thing, uh, in a place of safety and then comes back for him. She is evil. Awful, insufferable, awful person. Because she didn't know how de immortal... She had no guarantee that he would be fine when she comes back. No. He was getting out of He could have been a scout eaten alive by the time she'd come back. You know? Um, okay, so yeah, she believes him for dead again. Um, uh, all right, all right. So when they, the bad guys find him now, because... Because, well, like, something did happen as well. They were on a plane, and because of all the mess that they made in, I think it was Morocco or whatever, the CIA lady, you know, who's in charge and doesn't care about these goons murdering, literally murdering people in front of her, right? Suddenly is now like the president, you've lost the thing, you have to go back to America, and uh, you don't have the support, whatever, we're going to take you back. And so she just gets shot, she's dead. Yep, the end. Throw away pointless character. Oh, but the bad guys are bad, but hey, they've already murdered her. Anyway, and then the bad guys, like, I forget how they figured out where Indiana Jones was going to be. I, I don't think. remember either. I yeah. feel like they, they might have been a net, like, a, some type of drop to indicate that they could figure out where, but, or it might have just been bull trap because it's not beyond this film, honestly. But anyway, the bad guys find them and they're on the boat, and when they come up from diving, yeah, the bad guys are there. And he is going to force Indiana Jones to translate the thing that they found in the boat. And Indy won't do it because these are bad guys. Hmm. Hmm. But uh, what might have been just like you know, a really obvious thing to do is to half translate and feed false information. Like any idiot could probably... Uh, and I'd say Indiana Jones could figure this, but he doesn't. He doesn't figure that out. But of course, insufferable lady, she, that they got to give that to her. So she will do it. But her her logic makes her look awful because she says, Indiana says, don't tell him. And she's like, I don't believe in noble deaths. She could have spoken up before the friend got shot. Because, because yeah. so they're telling Indiana Jones, tell us what we want to know. Indy says no. First shoots his friend, Antonio Banderas, in the knee. And so at this point, if insufferable lady is going to give the bad guys what they want to prevent death and everything. That, that might be the right time to you do it. You'd think that. You'd think that. To be heroic. <clears throat> but Indy says no, and then shoots the friend, Antonio Banderas, dead now. Murdered. Uh, and then after that, she decides to save her own skin, basically. She says, I don't believe in noble death, so I'm going to do it my way. And so, murder on her hands as well, where she could have prevented it. And she starts strutting, like, tr showing off how smart she is. Oh, it means this, and this will mean this, and this will mean this, because I'm so smart, I'm so smart. And uh, she's trying to distract the people from the fact that she has a stick of dynamite in her hand. And um, she lights it, she's having trouble, and so all the only thing Indiana Jones does, he holds a cigarette lighter closer to the The thing, string to, the to, string light, to it, yeah. light it. That's, that's the level of input he has to insufferable lady saving their bacon with dynamite. You just you could kill them all. I mean, it's probably not a very reliable way to do it. It's probably still innocent people on the boat. I can't remember if the bad guys killed everyone at this point, but... I think they killed them, like most mm, of them, yeah. Maybe. And as well, eh, remember too, she got bribed with all that money. Oh, She's yes, like, that's right. I want, what, $100,000 in cash? Mm -hmm. And he's like, actually, here's these gems or gems, crystals jewels, or whatever. Yep. She goes, okay, cool, do that. And now I'll start doing it. And hey, do it properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, again, after money... Awful, Jeez. disgusting, vile person. Um, and, yeah, let Antonio Maderas die. And then she drops the dynamite. They kick it down underneath the bows of the ship. It explodes. The ship doesn't sink. <laughs> You'd think. Yeah. Dynamite. Um, but it's enough of a distraction for them to jump on the bad guy's boat and... Sail away. And, like, the bad guys literally are shooting at them. And then he just... He stands there and goes, like, he doesn't even take cover. He just... I hope they miss! <laughs> 
And they do, because they're goons and they're bad shots, but... And so, uh, then that's this where she reveals that I didn't tell them everything, right? And then the, the tablet they have must be made out of wax. It's a wax tablet, because he pours alcohol on it, lights it, and it melts away the wax, revealing a disc that tells the co- the true correct location of where it's at. And so, well, I mean, that gives them the upper advantage. They should be able to get to it, and the bad guys won't know where they are. But the bad guys just follow them. Yeah. They, they get to the, the boat Indios, and they just follow, and they literally, Indiana Jones just leads them, like they don't try and lose them, or realise they're getting followed, or anything. And the bad guy grabs binoculars and says, ah, they're going west instead of east. Follow. We'll go that way. <laughs> It's <laughs> so stupid. And then, because uh, the the creators, I don't know if this is whole, solely the fault of the writers, wouldn't it be awful if you actually are a competent writer that you handed in a competent script, right? And then the people in charge of the film just butcher the entire thing and it, the result is this type of abomination that your name is associated with. Mm-hmm. That would be so embarrassing. Because the writing is truly dog crap in this film because they get to Sicily. This is where the actual location is going to be. And they're getting stuff ready for it. And the uh, annoying, pointless sidekick kid character decides to get an ice cream and just walk walk around. And because the people, writers or creators, uh, they're incompetent, they don't know what they're doing here, right? They need the plot to perform. And so it's just the kid so happens to walk right to where the bad guys are. Sicily, big place. Uh, did the bad guys know where they docked? There's very much straight there. So they they capture him. Um, Indy somehow sees I, I, the, he was looking for him. I don't know. And then he sees the kid getting in. He's like, ah, oh, he's qu- captured. He, the kid will tell them where they're going. We just need to get there first. Now let's go. And they don't bother trying to save the kid. It's like, no, nah, they won't. They won't harm him. They, they, they get, the kid is going to give him the information. What about after the kid gives them the information? These people have been shown that they will murder anyone. Oh, they don't care. Old lady in a building, right? And Indy is so sure that they won't harm the kid. Yes, they would. That's because the, the creators, whoever made the, whoever made the story, they're incompetent. They don't know how to, they need the story to go forward. Oh, they, they, contrary to the bad guys. Literally, the bad guys, when they get to the ruin, right? There's like an organizer saying it's closed. Later on, we see him that they even killed that guy. They're killing every witness they find, but not the kid. The yeah. kid they're dragging with them because... He doesn't tell them anything anyways, because when they go through, they just follow the they path just that follow. Indy left. And this is astounding. So the ruin, the ruin that, you know, the riddle whatever revealed, right? They go into a cave, and it's literally a cave where clearly people have gone through before. Tourists have gone through before. There's even scaffolding at the entrance showing that this is an active place, Right. And they find a section in the ruins that no one has ever gone to before by looking up. That's the level of creativity of finding a secret entrance to a part of a ruin, which was, unironically, what's the guy's name? Um, It's not Aristotle, it's Archimedes. I think, it, I think it's Archimedes, his literal tomb. And it's like... And they try and indicate it like it's this great mystery by there's a crack in the stone on one side that casts a crescent shapes like bit of sunlight high up on the ruins up there, which indicates there's an opening higher up. No one's ever found that before. People who excavate ruins and everything extensively just, yeah. just didn't bother looking up. <laughs> so freaking stupid. I was expecting, right? Shame on me for actually expecting. This isn't even smart. Just base level not being stupid. That the the thing would cast a crescent thing on on the side of of the t- tomb, and he would crack open, and it's actually a thin bit of stone, and it'll crack open, and it reveals that there's something behind it. I was expecting <laughs> that, but no. It's just it points up. Let's go up. Oh, there's an entrance. <laughs> no one's found it before. The level of stupid here is just like, we're getting to new depths, people. It's amazing. So there's that. Interestingly, there's parts in the um the trailer that they must have cut. Hmm. Because in the trailer, we see an insufferable lady stopping a big round boulder from rolling. That's not in the film. It wasn't there. Yeah. 
Thank goodness. Well, well, because that was a clear indication of it really looked like they were going to have her one up Indiana Jones. So Indiana Jones had to escape the big boulder where she, she just knew how to prevent it from falling down because she's better than him. And that was in the trailer. It's in the trailer. Thank goodness for test screening. You saved us from something. Right? <laughs> Wait, but they left all this other crap in. <laughs> Maybe that was the worst thing. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out in special features. We're not going to watch that anyways, but still. <laughs> There's also a moment here which is just unbelievable. A whole heap of bugs fall on Indiana Jones and the insufferable lady, and Indiana Jones freaks out to bugs, literally saying, Are they off me? Get them off me! Get them off me! Indiana Jones, who never freaked out with giant spiders, the only small animal type thing that ever scared him was snakes, absolutely being terrified of all these bugs. It was so out of character, and a very poignant example of how much of a contradiction this version of him is. They, they get locked in a certain place that has like methane, and they're gonna, mm. and so Indy, uh, the one, one of the few things that Indy just is, knows something that she doesn't, right? Very few in this film is like, ah, oh, he, Archimedes, or not Archimedes, or whatever it is they're getting. He, he was uh, fascinated with water displacement, and so he put more rocks on a platform that opened up another thing, and they found, and there. So yeah. finding another part of the to tomb. And they get there, and they find. The coffin and the dial is there, but the bad guys just follow them there. Yeah. Just follow them. The kid gets free because the kid is like, uh, you know. We, he, he runs away for a he second. He runs away. And they catch him, handcuffed him, and then he's cuffed to like the big heavy guy, and they go on the big... Uh, just just on that note, yeah, yeah. there's, there's a, a wooden rope bridge yeah. in a 2,000-year-old tomb that no one has ever been in before. Wooden rope bridge over a running stream of water so it's moist and damp, right? That thing wouldn't even survive 20 years before rotting away. But I suppose it's just there, 2,000 years, perfectly fine, strong enough for people to hold. I was like, like a whole squad of goons can go by, yes. but the one heavy guy and a child, oh no! Yep, and then they fall off, and then uh, they established before the kid doesn't know how to swim. Yeah. They, they went they, when they went diving for the thing, and the Indiana Jones gets attacked by eels. He can't swim underwater. Suddenly he can, hmm. and then they try to make it that he because when he says he can't swim, Antonio Banderas says, "Oh, I do, everyone can swim. Uh, do, do something like reach and stroke." It wasn't that, but they said something. Do that, right? And then underwater, the kid take he, he's a pickpocket, so he pickpockets the keys, uh, lock and then gets the handcuffs onto some wooden uh, metal grate that's underwater. Um, and I didn't mind that. I was like, they established as a pickpocket. You pickpocket the thing, switch the handcuffs on them and use it to his advantage, trap the guy underwater so that guy's dead, he's drowned. Um, I was wondering how they would kill, because he was the biggest, mus most muscly yeah. goon. And Indiana Jones constantly, up to this point, every confrontation with his muscly goon is defeated by him. The muscly goon just sits him down. He, he, he tries to hit, does nothing. Like, he can't face this muscly goon. So I thought they were setting up a confrontation between the muscly goon and Indiana Jones. Shame on me for thinking that Indiana Jones would finally win against the Muscle Goon. That's basically just been rolling over Indy at every point. Mm. But no, it's the kid that kills him. Yeah. Anyway, and so then the kid literally swims underwater to the surface on the other side. And when he surfaces, he repeats the, the phrase that the guy says, like, reach and stroke, reach or something like that. Like, he's struggling. So it's like, no, no, if you've never swum before... You would not even be able to swim that well, really. I don't, I don't believe it. Like, especially underwater and everything that you have did. So anyway, the kid gets free. The bad guys find them at the tomb, steal the thing. The kid sneaks in. And I can't exactly remember what happened that causes the scuffle. But there's a scuffle. Indy gets a gun uh, happening. He, he gets shot, shot. Indiana Jones legitimately gets shot. But insufferable lady and the kid escape. That's, that's what happens. Uh, so, the bad guy takes Indy with him. Mm. Why? Great question. Great question. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think that, you know, you shot... Also, you got shot, like, right near the heart. Right? It was like... It, was like... it wasn't up here. It was down here. Yeah. I was thinking, is he dead? Yeah. Like, is he going to die? And he barely acts like he's shot for the rest of the film. <laughs> Except not until the end where it's like, the oh, The very end shot. where oh. suddenly he's... A... But... Typical Hollywood trope. Exactly. Like, and there's only a small patch of blood on his shirt shot it would be bleeding out but the length of time that he just goes around with an untreated bullet wound near his heart yeah they they go from that tomb all the way out travel all the way down to a new base hop on a plane fly, fly for like through time through time 
have a whole kerfuffle in the time in space, the crash goes down, and then, then you need time to fly back to the original time, <laughs> go to a hospital, get treated. And he hasn't bled out by this point, and it's still untreated. And honestly, there could be up to like a week worth of time. Oh my gosh. Oh, this film is so profoundly stupid. Um, and so, yeah, he gets shot at this point. The bad guys decide to take him with him. They don't say why they need him. They don't need him. No. Um, is it the math language? No, because when he gets it, he he already knows how to put in the dials. Puts the thing and, and, and he just has it. There's no point. Back up for thinking stuff. I, the whole time, when he does reveal something, they say, shut up, be quiet. Yeah. You're wrong. Yeah. And he does, yeah, they don't even believe in him when Indiana Jones reluctantly gives it the information. And I'll get to that point, because why is he, Indy, why are you even telling them <laughs> and giving the chance to, he's actually trying to, holy crap, that, that's an act that would help them. Because <laughs> if you listen to Indiana Jones, then he would have. Then he. Then they would have turned the aeroplane around before going to the time vortex, made the correct adjustment. So we'll jump to it because we're on it now. Indiana Jones is on the plane, and he realizes that Archimedes or whatever didn't understand continental drift, mm. and you have to account for that in the whatever mathematical uh, inputs you put on the clock to determine where you're going. I don't know how the clock. How you can put something on the clock to affect where you're going through these natural time rifts that just appear. You would think if these are natural phenomenon, it just should point you towards the one that leads you to where you want to go. Mm. So maybe it'll point them to a different one that leads them to where they want to go. But the, the indication is that no, it's what you put on the clock that is determining uh, where you go. But anyway, so Indy figures out that it doesn't have continental drift and that the information put on the clock is wrong and that the bad guy is going to the wrong time. The bad guy has already revealed his plan to Indiana Jones. It says he wants to uh, make the Nazis win. Mm. And I think part of it was even killing, killing Hitler. Basically killing Hitler, replacing Hitler. Replacing, replacing Hitler, Hitler because he knew all the errors where the Nazis went wrong and he would make him win and everything. So he wants... This, that's really bad. Really bad. Indiana Jones realises that the bad guys put in the wrong coordinates and will not end up in Nazi Germany and then he decides to tell them. And if the bad guy listened to him and quick enough, they would have turned the plane around, figured out what was up, put the things. It's why you're helping them. <laughs> and to quickly, I we'll, we'll go through. But basically, they end up going two thousand years in the past over Sicily and. They get shot down by Roman, like, ba ballistas. Mm. Bull crap. Like, good luck you could get that accuracy and that range. I, I know ballistas, like, bull crap, right? But a, a World War II player gets shot down by Roman ballistas and the bad guys die. Like, literally, you could take Indiana Jones out of this film, the bad guys would have put the wrong coordinates in, gone to the wrong era of time, and got shot down and, this, and still died. Yep. The film has no point. He does nothing in this film <laughs> apart from potentially helping out the bad guys. Like, literally, he does actions that help them get the clock sooner. And then he even tells them the thing that could... Potentially make them get their faster. Succeed. Yeah. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter, apparently, because the time thing was always meant to get... Any, whoever gets the time thing, it was meant to send them back to that time period when they're being attacked to save them. Yeah, that apparently. was a line. Like, and so we skipped over pretty fastly, but basically, there's some really stupid things like the kid getting in another plane and following them because the, the bad guy plane gets shot down, and so the story needs a plane to be able to get them back. Mm. And so this whole setup of the kid knowing how to fly and everything is a really clumsy, absolutely incompetent way of trying to fix that story plot where they need a second plane. Mm. Indiana Jones knows how to fly. Just have him not get captured or get shot and chase the bad guys in another plane through the time vortex to stop them from stopping Hitler, yep. right? He, we know he knows how to fly. But no, kid flies. Insufferable lady chases down the bat. Instead of going in the other plane with the kid who knows how to fly and following them, she mm. decides to hop on a motorbike to chase down the, the Nazi plane and sneak aboard the Nazi plane. By hopping really? on, the wheel on the wheel of the plane, and then it goes inside the engine, so she crawls around yeah. and somehow manages to and get I mean, out. Like, 
I'm not an expert on like the internal structure of World War II era planes, but they try like I just, I just I just not convinced that there would be a cavity in the wing where the wheel rises, where a person can like slip through. I, I would almost think you'd be crushed in in the mechanics of it. And again, there's still things like I don't think a motorbike could probably outrun a plane. Yeah, yeah taking, taking off. off. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and the whole reason why they need her on the bad guy plane instead of going with the kid is because Indiana Jones needs to be saved. Mm -hmm. He can't save himself. He's too incompetent in this film. No, the insufferable woman needs to save him, which she does in a very bumbly bad way. Yeah. Um, because uh, she almost is falling, but anyway, they, they, they get uh, I, um, a uh, parachute, parachute yeah. jump off, the plane gets shot down by Roman ballistas from triremes, <laughs> crashes, and they die. <laughs> Bad guys, dead. I, I'm hesitant to call them good guys because the several lady is not a good guy at all. Right? And throughout this time, right, when the uh, World War II plane is getting shot at by the triremes, the other plane the kid is on is there. Yeah. No one is shooting at that. No. No, like, it's not even in danger at all. But the uh, the World War Two plane gets hit multiple times. Like, like I'm not kidding, multiple times with insane range from ballistas. Like this, just shut up, film you stupid little bull crap. Um, and then they like they just show the plane kind the the kid the plane the, the kid is in landing. Luckily, he has a pilot there that knows how to land. Um, again, so stupid. But you know, Deus Ex Machina say because too much incompetence of the creators of this film to figure out something actually makes sense. Mm. Um. And I'm like, they were showing a really rocky terrain all around this city. And I'm like, where is room to land this thing? There's no straight flat bit of land at all, but it just lands. And because it just lands. Yep. Um, and so they, 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 Indiana Jones lands. And then Archimedes, I think, meets them there. And this is where you're, I think you might be right, where it seems like, did he rig it or whatever? Like, I wasn't really sure, but it did seem like, because Archimedes says, you were always meant to come to this yeah, point. Yeah. And to me, I, I thought this was a clear setup that, okay, they're not changing the past. They're going to fulfill a part in the past, which was the way that the city survived this Roman attack or didn't or whatever. Something mm. happened there. But they in, end up playing a role in the past that was already there because they found the watch on the guy already. Yeah. But no, that will change the past and ruin the past and you'll do all bad things. So you can't do anything. And so there's no payoff to this setup that you're always meant to come here thing. It was just... It could have been any other random point in history and the bad guys get shot down by whatever stupid reason they want. Struck by lightning, it's so arbitrary and dumb at this point. Um, here are the, the main characters, uh, the insufferable lady main character, who is the main character, doesn't do anything to stop the bad guys. Um, and uh, then they decide that they just need to go back. And this is where Indiana Jones fully contradicts, well, he's already been contradicting this. Everyone. This is like coming home to roost. This is the cherry on top. Like, bull crap. Like, this is so insulting. This is one of the worst parts of the film. Indiana Jones decides to stay in the past. Mm. Like, even though that could ruin history completely. Um, they, I, she tries to say, we need you in the future. Suddenly she's all weepy and sad, even though you've been trying to murder him multiple times. You hate this man. Don't get me to... Don't lie to me, film, that's trying to get me to believe she cares about this character at all. But she's like, oh, we need you. You can't stay back. And everything. And the the final insult which is just astounding okay and this is this is literally you know how the uh, final climax thing ends uh, there's no big drastic desperate you know chase to get back through the time portal to fix a plane to fight off bad guys that are after them like uh, they didn't have to fight to retake the the thing and stop the bad guys from ruining history the bad guys kill themselves no 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 when indy says he's going to stay in the past she knocks him out. She just punches him out. Hard cut. He wakes up back in the regular time. Mm. That's it. I'm not kidding. It is that incompetent and lazy. Like, like, they don't show any resolution. It's just hard cut. And the beloved Indiana Jones hero gets knocked out by this insufferable friggin' cow. Right? Knocked out. The hero we love gets knocked out cold. Right? From... And... The hero is prevented from doing something astronomically stupid that is wholly against his character. Someone who loves history and would know to preserve history and make sure, mm. keep it, and he would never be so dumb or selfish to, you know, 
rewrite it for his own sake, right? No, no. He suddenly betrays the values that this character is supposed to have had for his whole life and then gets saved from doing something truly horrible by the insufferable evil cow that's been trying to murder him throughout the whole movie and she knocks him out and then that's that's the cut. Like, presumably she then saved the day, right? But she didn't save anyone. Like, she didn't stop the bad guys or anything. Just got on the plane, flew back through the hole. He hasn't bled out by this time either. And he wakes up in his apartment. Yep. And that... It is unbelievable. I can't believe how lazy it is. I cannot believe how lazy it is. It's incredible. Like, this, the film sets up this problem that you'd think that's going to be a struggle for them to solve. And then they just hard cut. Problem solved. They're back. It's, it's like, it, it's, it's one of the worst endings, actual endings, like, because Into the Spider-Verse has one of the worst non-endings because yeah. it doesn't have an ending. And I was really critical of that. I couldn't believe that they would, you know, but this actually is, is an ending of a film. And as a result, it's like one of the worst endings that I've ever seen, where it's terrible on two huge reasons. The unbelievable insults to Indiana Jones as a character, where the ending, the climactic ending, is him getting knocked out, punched in the face. Can you imagine the fi finality of the supposed? This is not an Indiana Jones film; it's an insult, right? And this is a big reason why the final ending for the supposed Indiana Jones film is Indiana Jones getting knocked out and stopped from doing something astronomically stupid that could ruin history. That's how it ends, and he's knocked out by the most one of the most close to top, unlikable characters I have ever had the displeasure of having to suffer through. Mm. She is the one that knocks him out, the one that's been, that has tried to murder him on multiple occasions. <sighs> and they try to tie it in a bow by having more nostalgia bait at the end as well. Because his uh, supposed ex-wife appears, which is the same actress as Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I'm like, not buying, like, hang on. Nothing has been resolved. All the problems in your marriage and, and nothing. And, he's, and he explains it. Like when their son got killed, she couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. And that broke apart his marriage. All the problems are still there, but mm. now they're not. Well, because she comes in and says, oh, I heard that you came back. What does that mean? If anything, his final decision in the film means he is the most unlike the true Indiana Jones this character could ever be. He is so far gone. He's not back in any means. But he said, I hear you come back, so now I'm back. It's like, it's bullcrap. It's utter bullcrap. Um, and then Sala is there, but then takes away, and several lady is there. I just, I, I, you are evil, lady, okay? And she's like trying to, you know, they're, oh, they're all happy now, right? And then she leaves with a kid sidekick, and that's the end. Oh, it closes with his hat hanging on a hook outside and with him reaching in and grabbing it. Yeah. Whatever that means. I know what they're trying to say. He's, he's, he's not done. No, no. This was this <laughs> was the death of Indian Jones, hanging out to dry armor. Um, Kathleen Kennedy grabbing it, being like, ah. Yep. Another franchise ruined. Truly, truly. This is like... I, I, think, I think this is easily worse than what they did to Luke Skywalker. It's on yeah, par, at least. It's on par, yes. So, it's easily on par, I think is what I'm trying to say, because Luke Skywalker's betrayal was insane as well, like willing to murder, you know, um, his own nephew for just having dreams or somewhere where he was willing to save Darth Vader's life. Like, okay, we'll, start, we'll start to <laughs> start rub it on with that. <laughs> but, like, Indiana Jones willing to screw up all history for his own selfishness because his life has become so miserable and pointless. There's nothing to live for. Because he's an old man. He's an old man with nothing to live for. So he wants to be selfish and live in the past. And they're trying to sell it like, I've, I've wanted to be part of the past my whole life and this is my opportunity. Would no, that selfish desire would never trump Indiana Jones' rational understanding that you can't screw up history. Hmm. He respects history too much and would love history too much. So it's a, it's a true fundamental core betrayal of this character, right? And then the fact that they made him such an incompetent, bumbling, washed up loser, getting... And like, Luke Skywalker did get showed up by, you know, um, Ray mm. a lot. But not as much as what was happening in this film to me. Like, this is just constant crapping on him. 
And Ray was annoying, but at least she didn't try to kill anyone. Yes! Or do awful things, or do it just for the money. <laughs> like, at least she was somewhat a decent human being. Where in this one, it felt like, why are you still with her? Because obviously she's yes. a villain. Yeah, she's evil. Like, I, I have hard, I'm having hard to pick who's worse, her or Gladriel, but she's one of the most vile characters I've ever had the displeasure of watching. Unironically. I, I, when I say vile, I'm talking about, in a sense, where the movie is trying to propose them as the main character, the hero, right? Because I know there are characters that are meant to be evil, mm. right? True villains who commit genocide and stuff, right? And those are vile characters. But no, this is like one of the most vile protagonists I've ever had the displeasure of having to watch. Yeah. What a despicable, vile film, honestly. And the more you look into it, the, the more that you'll find things. The uh, worse it gets. So, in the not Indiana Jones film, Dial of Dysentery, I'm taking that from Nurse Roddick, I think you the one that coined that one. What a lousy piece of crap. Not not not, not, not worth your time at all. No, no. And I think that's all the franchises that Lucasfilm could screw up now. Is right? it? <laughs> I mean, we've got Star Wars, and we've got Willow, we've got Indy, that's the main three. You've just got to... Willow. You know? And, like, the main character in Willow, the um, when I say, like, the princess girl, she's up there with one of some of the most vile and insufferable characters. Yeah. But this one beats Willow, like, and now it's like a... Uh, Gladriel... From Rings of Power or or this. This is it's it's, it's tough to figure out who's worse. <sighs> we are in realms of awful that just are astounding. Oh. <laughs> and the thing that makes me so sad is this is Harrison Ford's last movie. Yeah. He's too yeah. old now. He can't yeah. do anymore. What an insult this to is the, the way. legacy of a character that, you know, yeah. And the fact that I I I think he just was doing it for the paycheck because truly what an awful assassination of Indiana Jones. Ah, so that's disappointing. <laughs> Thanks for joining our review. Until next time, stay on watch.